Welcome to my presentation on shadow banking and securitized banking. Now, this presentation is going to show how shadow banking along with securitized banking was behind the global financial crisis and how commercial banks competed with investment banks during the GFC by using the shadow banking system. In this presentation, we're going to be revisiting a lot of concepts on securitization, SPVs, SIVs, repurchase agreements, etc. So if you're confused with any of the concepts discussed in this video, please visit the links below in the description. So without further ado, let's kick off by defining shadow banking. Now the term shadow banking generally refers to all unregulated activities by a financial institution or financial intermediary. The, the meaning of this term has become very loose over the past few years, but for the sake of this pr presentation, we're just gonna keep it simple and define it as such. Now in finance, when we say unregulated activities, it generally means activities that are off balance sheet. So let's get into shadow banking. Here, as you can see in the diagram, we have an originating bank, which in this case, I am gonna call Citibank to help my illustration, which will operate as a traditional commercial bank. So in this picture, we have savers and borrowers. Citibank gets money from savers and issues deposits on this money by paying interest payments um, to the savers. So with this money, Citibank then lends out the money to borrowers, for example, in the form of mortgages, and I'm going to denote mortgages by this capital M here. And so Citibank profits from the spread between the deposit rates and lending rates. So what we have established here is the originate to hold model. Originate to hold. This literally means that the bank, the originator, in this case Citibank, originates these mortgages and holds it till maturity. Now, this doesn't stop here. Citibank wishes to make more profit out of this originate to hold model, but its activity is limited by capital regulations such as the Basel ratio. So just to give you a short insight on this capital regulation ratio, this is the amount of capital regulation, sorry, capital or cash a bank or a financial institution has to hold required by its financial regulator, which is usually about four to 8% of their total assets or risk weighted assets. So normally four to 8%, depending on the type of ratio, the amount of capital needs to exceed four to 8% of the total assets or risk weighted assets. So basically these ratios are designed so that banks hold enough cash or capital as a buffer against adverse situations. For example, when there's a sudden surge in demand for cash or when large amounts of mortgage loans default. I will talk about capital regulation in more detail in another presentation. So returning to our topic, banks hate holding capital. This is simply because the opportunity cost of holding cash or capital is the interest payments on future investment opportunities foregone. So to avoid capital regulation, Citibank sets up a special purpose vehicle, also known as a special purpose entity to securitize these assets. So in this example, Citibank would get the mortgages off its balance sheet through the SPV and securitize it, which will then be sold to investors. Now, the investors will then pay note proceeds, which will then 
pass through the SPV back to Citibank. And rating agencies here play a role of uh, rating these securities by the underlying risks. But there, there is a huge incentive problem here. Rating agencies like Moody's or Standard & Poor are incentivized to give good ratings or at least investment grade ratings, ratings on these securities because once they give out bad ratings, banks like Citibank in this example would stop going to them for ratings and they would lose a client. Now, as you can see here, we have just established the originate to distribute model. So I'm gonna erase the hold here. And so instead by securitization, we have established the originate to distribute model. Here the bank, which is the originator, does not hold the assets until maturity, but distributes them to investors via securitization. Now, here is the fun part and the start of shadow banking. This time, Citibank also sets up a structured investment vehicle or a SIV with the purpose of issuing new securities and making investments. Now remember, the SIV looks much more like a bank than an SPV in that it has its own balance sheet. So what it will do is it will buy back or use the securitized assets and hold it as assets. So they have CMOs or CDOs here as its assets and issue asset back uh, commercial papers to investors for note proceeds. So in the liability side, it issues uh, ABCPs and receive no proceeds from this transaction. And what you have to realize here is that these ABCPs are very short term and the SIV, which I will call mini city, uses a line of credit from Citibank, which means Citibank guarantees the investors payment in the event that the collateral goes bad. So the CIV, the SIV, has its own balance sheet with securitized assets on the asset side and uh, ABCPs on the liability side, just like a bank, but only better because it does not hold any deposits and hence not subject to regulation such as uh, pay, having, having to pay deposit insurance or being subject to capital requirements. The, asset he, the assets here doesn't particularly have to be CMOs or CDOs. It can be any type of loan from Citibank. It could actually be any type of loan directly from Citibank's balance sheet to the SIV. But here I'm trying to dem demonstrate that a lot of banks use these securitized assets as collateral for these, for these ABCPs in the shadow banking system during the GFC. And so once the investors found out about the underlying collateral, which was mainly subprime mortgages, they refused to refinance. As I said, the drawback is that these ABCPs are very short term, usually between about one to four years in maturity, whereas the maturity on the securitized assets would be very long term, ranging from about 20 to 30 years. So there is a huge maturity mismatch and the SIV is extremely exposed to refinancing risk. And this is exactly what happened during the GFC because these investors thought they were holding AAA rated securities or at least investment grade securities. But once they realized that the underlying collateral was subprime, they pulled out, refused to refinance, and Minicity wasn't able to fund these CDOs and CMOs on the balance sheet, which were very bad in quality because a lot of the subprime classes were defaulting on their mortgages. And eventually these items fed back into Citibank's balance sheet and things became very viral. So far, we have looked at how commercial banks use shadow banking 
and I will go into more detail about securitized banking in the second part of the, sec of the presentation. Now that was my alarm and see you again in my second part of the, sec of the presentation.